everybody, how are we all doing? I hope we're having a good weekend so far today. It's Saturday the 23rd of November 2013 and we are back with Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is uh, episode 8 titled The Well. Um, now this episode was quite an interesting one for uh, for one main reason really. Um, it was the, uh, the tie-in for uh, Thor the Dark World. So this this episode literally pretty much takes takes place after the events of what happened in Thor the Dark World. Um, the, even the intro gives you a brief description as well. So if you haven't seen the movie, there are actually there are there are spoilers um, in some sense um, for, for for the second Thor movie in this in this episode. So, um, so 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 the agents are in are in Greenwich picking up all the pieces. Um, you know, in in the rubble, and they're, uh, they're they're all you know having a little chit chat, and especially Coulson going on about how I'm sure one of Thor's people could easily come down and clean this up with like some sort of magic broom or something. So, and then you've got um, Sky and Melinda May both agreeing how uh, Thor is very <laughs> dreamy, <laughs> which was quite cute. Um, moving on from there, uh, we go to uh, Norway, where uh, we find. Um, a couple have come across a massive tree. Uh, we, we, we were thinking that they were just cutting down a tree for the sake of it, but it turns out that this tree has something ancient inside of it. Um, now, I did say that this film is tied in with Thor the Dark World, and pretty much throughout the entire episode, it's all things Asgardian. Okay. Um, and what they actually stumble across, well, I say what they stumble across, what they were looking for and what they find is part of of a, a staff um, that is, is Asgardian and it was used as what's known as the, uh, the, the Staff of the Berserker. Um, this one particular character way back in the days of, of uh, you know, Thor mythology where um, you know, this staff gave the power of like, you know, a lot of rage was given to the person who wielded it and could literally destroy an army and just, you know, all, all by themselves. Um, so we find this this couple who uh, find find this one section of the staff, and the girl in particular, she when she holds onto it, it fills her with all the rage. She takes the power, and then you see her actually take out one of the um, like these two guys who actually work within the uh, the park recreation that they that they entered that they took the tree down. Um, and one of them, she just literally just pushes him with enough force to the point of where he dies instantly. Um, so yeah, you can tell that this this is going to be interesting for for, for the gang. Um, we see uh, the, the the main focus, the main character to focus on in this in this um, in this episode is obviously is Agent Ward, um, Paul Grant. He uh, we find that he actually has a memory that he is hidden inside of him that he's kept locked away of something that happened when he was younger um, it's to do with his with his younger brother and um, I didn't even know that uh, he had such a such a dark secret in the first place I mean we all have our dark secrets but you just didn't expect something like that from from Ward and it kind of also explains why he is the way he is in, 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 in essence as well um, so anyway what Coulson then realises that knowing that this staff, part of the staff is, is Asgardian, he realises that there's only one person who has the uh, knowledge of where to find the other two parts, because there's three parts of it all together. And uh, it's a professor who Coulson has known for quite some time. And uh, so when they go and visit this professor, um, he has like a book that gives a bit of, you know, poetic knowledge about the, the rest of the, of the pieces of the staff. Um, only to find that he goes after one of them himself, and Coulson doesn't understand why, um, and even I mean, the, the, none of them understand why why he was going after it. Um, they eventually uh, keep him custody on their plane to try and question him a bit more. Um, Coulson has his doubts about who he actually might be, not not who, but what he might be. And uh, we do find out later on in the episode that he is, in fact, an Asgardian. And he's been living on Earth for many thousands of years. So, yeah, um, quite interesting. And, you know, it's, it's a scary notion. So, and, you know, as, as they say, Asgardians are aliens. So think of, like, just the same, same way a Kryptonian 
that has lived on Earth for many, many years, is, who is hidden in plain sight, but has made sure that they've kept their powers in check, or they haven't used it, or they've somehow, you know, blocked their powers from being used, such things like that. And if you look, you look back on shows like Smallville, for example, um, one particular character by the name of uh, Daxur, who um, came to Earth centuries ago, but didn't bother to return back to Krypton, um, used a uh, blue kryptonite like bracelet to not so that he doesn't use his powers he lived a normal life all that sort of stuff so same same thing here for the Asgardians only that this this particular professor didn't actually use his powers <laughs> um, so as I said the whole entire episode is pretty much all infused with the, the, the dark world um, and as I say with, uh, with with how Ward's memory of his younger brother is is brought to light is because when he touches part of the staff, the second staff, the second part of the staff that the uh, professor took, um, it wakes up this this dark memory inside of him and it fills him with rage and he basically becomes, in essence, a walking time bomb. <laughs> um, he's got all this pent up rage in him and he wants to use it, but he can't use it on the guys. He can't use it on Fitzsimmons and May in particular, or even on on Coulson. Um, and also Sky. Now we get we get towards the sort of like the last sort of fifteen minutes of the episode, and this is where it gets interesting because you see Ward take down a gang of people who have been rallying to get the whole staff together, and um, he actually does really he really does take throw some punches given the power that he's now got. Um, but then one thing happened that I did not expect to see: Melinda May. Put the uh, put the staff together. She touched the mate. She touched the staff, and oh my god, you have never seen a woman be so kick ass in her life. It was just something interesting to watch. Um, she took on, she took on the girl who first uh, touched the touched the staff at the beginning of the episode, um, and just pretty much laid her to waste. <laughs> um, at the same time, the professor actually got hit with the staff by one of the other people, and uh, it was up to Coulson and the other guys to try and save him. Given the fact that his, uh, you know, as guardian anatomy is slightly different to humans, so all Coulson had to do was just make sure that his heart was still beating. Had to keep his heart, you know, from from from, from flatlining, and uh, the professor was able to heal himself after that. So, so yeah, the, the professor was still alive, which was good. Um, but I still think I thought it was a really good episode because it had that tie-in with. Thor the Dark World I really thought you know what it has that tie in it's got something and this is how in essence maybe all episodes should be like that not have too much of a huge a huge type I mean there was a lot of presence regarding Asgard in this in this episode so you felt it basically you really did feel it um, so who knows we don't know how other episodes are going to be but I have heard that they are going to have a crossover with Captain America the Winter Sol Soldier which is interesting because the film is out in March next year, so uh, it is March, isn't it? Oh, no, April. Sorry, so April. So, um, so that'll be like toward, towards the last couple of episodes or so. So that'll be interesting. Um, so it's actually going to be a crossover. I'm guessing it's not. It's not going to be a tie-in like with Thor: The Dark World. It's actually going to have, I would imagine, some characters. Maybe not the bigger name characters, but there will be a part in the film and a part in the TV show where you'll see them overlap each other that'll be interesting so i'm looking forward to that one that 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 that'll be i'm sure that'll be a cracking episode of some sorts um but as for as overall i still think it's uh it's pretty it's 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 doing all right um it's 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 okay the show the show is is not doing too badly i hope it's not doing too badly well I, unfortunately it is actually not doing so well but i'm still going to watch it and i'll still continue reviewing it for people who want to uh who want to watch my reviews and such but um um, but yeah, we'll see what happens, and I think um, next week's episode is titled the no that that was the well I've just done sorry. <laughs> um, what's it? The next episode is actually called the bridge, and this is going to be the uh, is it is it the bridge or repairs? No repairs. Sorry, repairs is the next episode, and then um, the bridge, and then that'll be the mid-season finale um, for. Uh, this year basically um so yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes and uh, the bridge actually sees the return of uh the uh, very first sort of 
superpowered being that they encountered in the first episode. Um, you know, Michael, right, what's his name? So uh, it looks like he uh, he comes back, which, which would be interesting. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.